What's up everyone? I'm the Kaiju no Kami and this is my quick review for The Simpsons Season 31. Oh my god. Simpsons just completed last week its 31st season and I watched every episode of it. I was actually doing so well I didn't really watch all the episodes to season 30. I was kind of ignoring most of 31 outside of like the Halloween special and then the awesome Thanksgiving of Horror special and an episode here or there but then the quarantine happened and I just ended up re watching the entire season because of that. It made for good dinner noise even though it wasn't very good. This season was awful. Like, season 28, awful. Season 17, awful. Although I'd still say season 17 is still the worst. There were just a lot of episodes that just weren't even all that funny. It was like, okay, okay, when are we going to get to the joke? Okay. Well, there's a funny joke. What was the joke again? Oh, well, I forgot. Let's move on. A lot of episodes like felt like they were too short because they ended and then there was like this epilogue thing that just didn't make any sense. Like there was one episode that the story ended but when it came back from commercial it had Homer and Cletus singing a Queen song as they were doing stuff. It, I don't get what the point was, but it ruined a lot of episodes that weren't even that great to begin with. Now I have here my phone to tell me the list of the episodes. So we had the Winter of Our Monetized Content. There were a couple of good things in there because as a YouTuber it did make a few jokes about being a YouTuber and how people steal things or how people monetize things. Overall it wasn't that great. There were a couple of jokes that just got killed by being reused over and over or dragged on repeatedly which happens a lot in modern day Simpsons. Go Big or Go Homer had some dude that like was obsessed with Homer, idolized Homer for some reason. No idea why, he just did. Kinda creepy, this dude was in his late 30s. The Fat Blue Line had Fat Tony getting framed for a robbery he claimed he never did and he promised he would never do as a child. The weird thing about that is the Fat Tony currently in the series is not the original Fat Tony, that's Thin Tony who took Fat Tony's place when Fat Tony died. So it's like, well wait, those scenes that they would have watched of when he was younger where he vowed he will never pit pocket people, that was the real Fat Tony, not this current Fat Tony, so... What the fuck? This year's Treehouse of Horror was god awful. Just dreadful all around. I don't even want to think about it. Gorillas on the Mast was Bart helps Lisa free a whale, which was kind of weird because they brought Willie along just so they could do this whole stupid ass free Willie comment, which was so lame. And then Bart decided he wanted to free a gorilla. The gorilla was rampaging town. Other stuff happened. I don't remember what at this point. Marge the Lumberjill was actually not a bad episode. Marge becomes a Lumberjill with this like lesbian lady and they become friends and Homer's thinking that Marge is going to leave him for her. That one actually had quite a few jokes in it. That one was one of the most tolerable episodes of the season. I was actually slightly entertained by that one. Live in La Vida Pura, which had Milhouse's mom and dad invite the Simpsons to come to their Costa Rica vacation home with a bunch of other families that they do every year. Again, just like with Marge Limbergill, it had some legitimately funny jokes in there that were actually funny. One that dealt with Bart, like cutting El Barto through a forest and all this stuff. The episode did not do very well to showcase Milhouse's family as being likable characters. They're utter scumbags after this episode. So way to go, those friends of the Simpsons are now unlikable douchebags. After that came the phenomenal Thanksgiving of Horror, which was a three tales of terror set in Thanksgiving, and it was really, really good. It is what the Treehouse of Horrors should have been for the last 10 years, if not longer. It was horrifying, it was gory, it had you going, holy shit, did they just do that? The story where a lot of our characters are portrayed as turkeys being hunted down by pilgrims was intense. It was suspenseful. It kept you on the edge of your seat. It was bloody. You had the Flanders family there, and then the mod turkey gets killed. It was like, oh, that's messed up. 
and it just kept on going. It's like, damn, this is really good. The second story was the weakest of the three, which had Marge use like this Alexa type device to create an AI to help her cook dinner for Thanksgiving. And then she was going to get rid of it and the AI wanted life. And it kind of felt like House of Wax from Trials of Horror 12, but a little bit better, though slightly boring. I liked that one better of the second round because I actually did watch this one twice. And then we had an alien parody that was pretty much just as brutal as the first one with this mutant cranberry sauce that is just disintegrating anyone it touches. So it like disintegrates Melhouse's hand and all this stuff. It was a pretty gruesome story. And like I said, the best since Halloween of Horror and one of the best Simpsons episodes of the last decade is the one episode that everyone should check out. If this episode aired before I had done my top 10 modern Simpsons episodes list, this episode would have been on it. It was that good. The next episode we had was Todd Todd, Why Hast Thou Forsaken Me? Which was about Todd Flanders and uh, Crazy Ned because he's like this right-wing Christian psychopath now. Everyone must follow his way or they go to hell or something like that. That was a pretty awful episode. We had a Christmas episode with Sideshow Bob. Bobby is cold outside. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. The next episode, Hail to the Teeth, which was Lisa Needs Braces. I think we've had that plot before, but this time Lisa also brings up the fact that she needs braces. Oh. Then the story has Lisa running for class president, pretty much just repeating the girl who wore pearls from a long time ago. I think like season 15 or 16. The Miseducation of Lisa Simpson, which was kind of interesting at first. It had all the schools become like a STEM school where they were training the GT kids and then they were training everyone else to be like taxi drivers, Uber drivers, lawnmower people and all the like. And then it got kind of tasteless when there was this plot twist that occurred. Frink coin just made no goddamn sense to me whatever. Professor Frink somehow creates his own fake money currency or something and becomes a billionaire over it, which gets Mr. Burns upset, so he wants Frank's fortune, even though he has his own fortune. But I will say there was one funny joke in that episode because when Smithers says, Burns, do you even know what cryptocurrency is? And he says, yeah, it's the currency that's in my crypt or something like that. That was pretty funny. But yeah, I, I don't get this episode. I don't understand it. I don't understand how Frank just became this overnight success and some stuff that, uh, Bart the Bad Guy came next, which aired like a year too late, where the Simpsons equivalent of Infinity War ends and everyone's waiting for the uh, next movie to come out, waiting for the entire year. Bart inadvertently gets to see the Endgame equivalent about a month before it comes out. So he starts threatening to say, hey, if you don't do what I tell you, I'm going to spoil the movie for you because this happens and this is going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And all Bart was in that movie was a freaking little shit. He was such an unlikable asshole. After that was actually a pretty decent episode called Screenless where Marge wanted everyone to put away their phones and not look at their phones for a week. And she ends up being the one who's majorly addicted to playing on the cell phone. So she takes everyone to this rehab center that's some weird ass crap. I liked the first half because the whole phone addiction thing was pretty funny, especially because people are doing that. People would just be on their phones while well, movies playing. It's like, what? What's the? What's the point of even having a movie playing if you're just to play on your phones? So that was kind of funny at first. The next episode is called Better Off Ned, which has Ned having to become a teacher to Bart, which is weird because he's already Bart's teacher, but he has to become like a. Um, role model for Bart to actually tutor Bart and then it makes Homer jealous so Homer decides to adopt Nelson sort of kind of it was kind of like the plot from the Simpsons movie with the one episode from season 15 or 16 where Homer started to pay attention to Nelson or some crap like that it was not that great of an episode I do remember two funny jokes from that which had Bart was pretending he was going to blow up the school and Mrs. Hoover got upset for him getting her hopes up and then one where um, Lisa's sitting there watching Bart do homework. Highway to Well, which is an episode where Marge gets a job at a pot dispensary. And not so funny stuff goes on from there. There was one funny joke, though, when Otto was in this pot dispensary and Lou, the cop, is trying to help him out. And he's all like, what's going on, man? I'm in a place where the cop is helping me to buy weed. 
this, no, this can't happen. This is unacceptable. That was actually a legitimately funny joke. The rest of it, not so much. Like Homer's doing this old style pot house or something. And it's like, why is it Homer there? Okay, because it's the Simpsons, why not? After that was the one I talked about a little bit earlier with Homer and Cletus, where Homer is disguising himself to be a hick because Mr. Burns wants Cletus' like helium farm or whatever it is he has, where he can make infinite balloons because it made Mr. Burns remind him something of when he was a child of getting balloons or some crap like that. And we had this plot about Maggie at a playground, which was actually piggybacking off of the little short that came out with Onward, which was cute, and this just completely ruined it. Because then you meet the mother of the baby from that short, and she's an utter bitch, and she's just unlikable, and Marge and her have a fight, so they don't get together anymore. It's, again, it's crap happened. I watched it. It happened. It ended. That's all there is to it. That's the season in a nutshell. There was a two-parter that again repeated a previous plot line. Red and Lovejoy has a new priest that comes in who ends up becoming beloved by the entire town of Springfield. Pete Holmes voiced this dude and that was it. It was a two-parter that felt like one episode stretched out to be a two-parter for some reason because nothing actually happened. They never actually showed us how he got the town to like him. Then when Lovejoy finds some dirt on him because he burned a Bible and he brings this back to Springfield, he tells us to Springfield, Springfield just turns on the dude without any proof. Lovejoy doesn't even show anyone the video of him burning the Bible, which is kind of weird because we saw him in this long drawn out segment downloading the footage. So this had to be the worst episode since The Surfsons. Just like with Thanksgiving of Horror, if I had done my top 10 worst Simpsons episodes of all time list, this probably would have at least made an honorable mention. It was just utterly boring. As I said, there was 15 minutes worth of plot for this like 44 minute episode. Coming after that was The Hateful Eight Year Olds, which had Lisa with a friend who has other friends that are mean bitches and they all pick on Lisa and her friend is all like, yes! I'm going to pick on Lisa too because now I'm cool. And she was given a redemption arc and stuff, which was garbage. The only funny part was that Bart got really ticked off at Lisa telling him that these girls were worse than him. So he went to help her just to say, oh, hell no, that is not going to happen. I am the worst terror there is. So that was kind of funny. And then finishing off the season was the finale, The Way of the Dog which was a Christmas episode for some reason. Is this something that couldn't have waited until next Christmas in December for season 32's Christmas episode? Why did it have to be the season finale to season 31? Anyway, it harkens back to the very first Simpsons episode. Santa's little helper is going crazy, kind of like with Bart's dog gets an F where he's being mean and we see it in his vision. And then it turns out that Santa's little helper has post-traumatic stress syndrome from being taken away from his mom to be a race dog. They go and meet the original owner of Santa's little helper who has like never met the Simpson family before, doesn't realize that they kept his name as Santa's little helper, even though there was an episode many, many years ago of the Simpson family meeting the owner and the owner wanting Santa's little helpers back. So, again, they aren't giving a damn about their continuity, but it was an awful episode, one of the worst of the season, one of the worst season finales I've seen. I don't know how last season's season finale came out because I didn't watch season 30's finale, but this was one of the worst season finales. It was just awful and pretty boring all around. It was a mean-spirited episode that didn't have any laughs and, again, for some reason took place at Christmas time, but couldn't just be held off until next year's Christmas time. So overall, Simpsons th season 31 was a crock of shit. It was garbage. It was horrible. It was boring. In some ways, I wish I never had continued watching it. In fact, I kind of wish I didn't continue watching it. It doesn't make me want to go out and watch the episodes from season 30 I missed, although at this point I'm sure I probably will. So have you watched any episodes from Simpsons Season 31? If so, what did you think of them? What's your favorite episode from the season? What's your least favorite episode of the season? Click like, 
Click subscribe, click the bell notification, click whatever else you do as you're clicking on to support me. You can support me on Patreon at Kaiju no Kami, Facebook Kaiju no Kami, Twitter at Kaiju no Kami, Instagram Kaiju no Kami, Discord Kaiju no Kami, and my website at creativitybydesignllc.com. Until next time, bye.